Alpha and Omega seated upon the throne of David. We saw in the last time we talked about the altar and how remarkably the place where we're at, we are able to demonstrate many aspects of the temple, including the altar, to where we have the foundation of the altar uh, described um, as in one word in Hebrew. And then we have the Ariel, the mountain, uh, which is the hearth, which is that, that part of the temple. We are explaining to you how this, uh, the altar will be in the inner court um, area, and we're demonstrating that by the doors. And now what we want to do is demonstrate the temple and the throne um, as well, as you could see in the intro. So what we have here is uh, our altar. In this case, what we're going to do is have this direction be east, okay, um, this direction be south, this direction be north. And now what we're doing is from the east, we would have the altar. And after the altar, there will be the porch. So in the porch, there are pillars. So think of this as our pillars. And then we have the door going into the temple. Okay. So uh, we're able to demonstrate all this uh, remarkably. Now, the altar is the center point of the temple complex. It's the very uh, center point. And we're going to show you how the throne is the center point of the inner court. Okay, now to explain to you what we mean about the temple complex, in the center of which, of the outer court in particular, we have the altar. And when we're talking about the temple complex, what we mean is the outer court, which you can see and the very center point is the altar. Here's the altar, and as you can see, it is the focal point in the center of the worship of the outer court. That is the feature of the outer court. Then, if we look closely and we go to the inner court, what you can see is the center of the inner court is the Holy of Holies, and this is where the throne is. So you can see if we take the points and dissecting points of the inner court, you can see that the very center point is the temple, but not only the temple, the Holy of Holies, not only the Holy of Holies, the throne. So the other thing happening here is this is the temple, these are the walls, and this is the porch and the entrance. And you'll notice in the... Um, 3D model, what we have is lining the inside. We have columns and wood pillars supporting the uh, upper chambers, and we have columns in the Holy of Holies. Well, this is something when um, Solomon built the first temple, he had a separate building and facility, and it was called the Hall of Pillars. But in the temple, Millennial Temple, that's actually the holy place. And then Solomon built a hall of judgment, okay, but also with pillars. And in the millennium, that's going to be the Holy of Holies. The Lord Jesus Christ will sit on his throne in the Holy of Holies, okay? So again, that's the center point, Holy of Holies, center of the Holy of Holies, his throne. And what you could see as well is the footstool is on the throne is replacing the Ark of the Covenant. So there is no Ark of the Covenant in the Millennial Temple. So once again, we have the center point of the altar in the outer court, center point of his throne in the inner court. Now in this view, you see the roof of the temple removed and you see the chambers and the walls. And you can see through the animation, we begin to see the pillars uh, you see the chambers, and then we begin to see the pillars lining the holy place. And in the first temple, there was a place called the Hall of Pillars. That's what the holy place is. And then um, Solomon had a separate building called the Hall of the Throne, and he had a judgment. And uh, he pronounced judgment, even the Hall of Judgment. So the throne, uh, even that Solomon had built, was a throne of judgment. And it's a judgment seat as well in the uh, Millennial Temple. So as we look up, you can see the six steps. And what 
Solomon built is he had six steps leading from the holy place into the holy of holies. And then the difference being, of course, Christ, his throne will be in the holy of holies where Solomon had a separate building. Okay. So as we ascend the steps, we see the door. And then on the other side of the door is his throne. And that is the hall of the throne, also lined with uh, pillars, as you can see. And there you see the footstool of gold representing the Ark of the Covenant. Now, in the inner court area, what we have is we have a, uh, an area that we can perfectly uh, define, north, south, east, and west, in a rectangular shape, and then in the center of which we would have the throne. So now, now that we have oriented ourselves, once again, we have the temple complex, we have the altar as the center point of the outer court, and then we begin to enter the temple. And when we uh, begin to enter the temple, we will now thus reposition ourselves and go inside the temple. So here you can see we have the doors open, but now what we want to do is uh, get a view of what the temple is going to look like once we have the doors open. Okay, here you can see we have the doors open, and here we are demonstrating the temple on the inside. Okay. So now that we have um, the view and, and we're looking inside the temple complex, all right, what is it we're looking at? What is it that we have? All right, we have the doors going into the temple here, okay? Then once inside, we will have the table, okay? As well, the Eluruna Church, um, they had the table as representing the altar, the altar also has a name Bima, and Bima can mean a pulpit. Okay, so that's what, as well, the table uh, can be viewed as a, our place of the altar of incense. Okay, but it also can be viewed as a, as a podium. All right, and as a podium, it's a place of uh, declaring the word. All right, so in this, we'll have a future message on the table, and the table representing the altar of incense with the four horns. Okay, so we have that, um, the table, and then on the other side, we may or may not know, we're not certain, but in Moses' tabernacle, we had the, um, the menorah. Okay, the cat wants to get in on, this, on the view here. All right, so then, um, as now, this is in the holy place, right? So we've entered the doors, we've entered into the holy place, um, Ezekiel defines clearly the table. Is there a menorah? Is there not a menorah? We don't know. But in the Moses tabernacle, the menorah would be in the holy place and it would be on that position, in your view, on the right side. Now, then we have the holy of holies, okay? And then we have um, another set of doors here. So in the holy of holies, then uh, we have the doors. Uh, once they are open... Okay, then we have the throne. Okay, so once again, we're able to demonstrate all of this in a way that we can clearly understand under the glory and testimony of Alpha and Omega because it is his throne, okay, that is in the holy place. As well, you can see we have a, le a level here of the holy place, and then we have the steps going up. We have six steps that go up into the level of the Holy of Holies, in which point we have his throne, okay? And the throne being the center point of the inner court. Here we're demonstrating as well the footstool, okay? We'll have a whole message just on the footstool. And here you can see the uh, raised level, okay? We have the steps going up. We have the raised level into the Holy of Holies. In the center of the Holy Holies, we have his throne, okay? So we're doing all this to uh, demonstrate and show the uh, perfect order of uh, what is happening in the temple. Because Ezekiel was instructed, show them the pattern, okay? The, uh, show them 
the form, and that is tikkuna, and tikkuna means, in uh, Job, we take that word, it means seat. Okay, so show them the order of the seat. Show them the order of the throne being the center point of the temple complex and the Holy of Holies. Okay, it would be from this uh, vantage point, okay, that, you know, he would be seated on the throne and he would also see Esther. Now, to quickly show you what I mean, here we have the vantage point from the Holy of Holies, and we're looking out. We have the holy place, and then we have the altar. And then what happened is we have the gate of the east gate, okay? And what happened is Esther presented herself to the king, and the king will be seated on his throne in the Holy of Holies. From his vantage point, he would look out, and you can see we're kind of demonstrating that by this pot. And Esther would stand right there, and the king would be able to see Esther present herself in the inner court because she was not supposed to come at that time. Okay, she, she presented herself, but what we're saying is this, in the real temple, this distance here is like 80 feet. It's very, it's very large, but it's something we'll explain further in a future video. But here's the table. Now we're looking out from the vantage point of Holy of Holies, looking out, and then we have the holy place here, and then we have the altar here. So let's get a better view and just uh, review that one more time. So we have the outer court, uh, we have the altar, and then from the altar we have the doors going into the temple. Once we're in the temple, we have the area of the holy place, we have the table, and then we have the six steps that go up, and then we have the holy place, and the holy place will be his throne. And he said, Son of man, the place of my throne, the place of the soles of my feet. Okay, soles of my feet, that means the, his footstool. And the Ark of the Covenant represented the footstool of the throne. The place of the soles of my feet, where I will dwell in the midst of the children of Israel forever. Okay, so that's what we're saying. Here's his throne. And guys, all of his words will be fulfilled. He will sit on the throne of David, okay, in the Holy of Holies, judging, okay, during the millennial rest period. Okay, that's what we're showing and uh, demonstrating here uh, unto the glory of his name and testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ, Alpha and Omega, he who was, who is, who is to come, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Going into the 3D model, if we approach the temple complex, we come to the east gate leading into the outer court. We're in the outer court, and then we see the east gate leading into the inner court. And if we go through the door of the east gate and inner court, first thing we see is the steps leading to the altar. And then we see the 10 steps in the porch of the temple leading into the holy place. Remember, we have, what, 10 steps? All right. We go up the 10 steps. We come to the doors of the temple. And inside, we see the area of the holy place. Okay, now this is something called sacred architecture. And this used to be built into many of the early churches. Here you see the example we shared with you before on the 10 steps of the Eleonor Church. Um, and Mount Olives in Jerusalem, where we have 10 steps leading up into an area, and there you see the table. We showed you the table earlier in the video, how the table could be a pulpit, and it could be an altar. Here you see the judgment seat of the church, whoever the leader is, the bishop, the archbishop, they would sit um, in this judgment seat, okay? So they built all these concepts from the book of Revelation, from the book of Ezekiel, into the actual church, into the building. So when the people went, um, they're looking at this every week, okay? So the early church did know about some of the things that we are learning here, okay? But they're taking that by reading uh, the Greek text, because that's where it shows the 10 steps. So now, as we go into 3D model, we begin to enter the holy place. You can see it is the hall of pillars, 
or it's also called the porch of pillars. And you see the columns and what they're doing is they're supporting chambers, which are up above here. Okay, so it's the columned porch of the throne. Okay, so this is uh, leading to the six steps. Okay, so what Solomon did, he had a separate building of the hall of pillars. He had a separate building of the hall edge of the judgment seat. But here you see the six steps and Solomon had six lions on the steps. But he made a great throne of ivory with a footstool covered in gold. So that's what we're showing here is that the judgment seat that Solomon built as a pattern of the first temple is the judgment seat of Christ, his white throne judgment, which we see in Revelation. Okay. Um, chapter 20. Um, behold, you know, I saw a white throne. Okay. So that's the white throne judgment that happens in Revelation. Well, there's going to be a white throne with a footstool, okay, in the holy place of the temple. And here you see the columns and all the design and feature of the holy place and the temple because it was a columned porch of the judgment seat. So we get the judgment seat. Christ will sit on the judgment seat. Judging in the millennium, okay, there's no Ark of the Covenant, and this is the white throne judgment happening in his seat on his throne, his white throne, in the Ezekiel Temple in the Holy Place. So we're, we're showing you everything. The, temp, the chair was rounded at the top, it said. Okay, it had a footstool of gold. We're giving you all the details, the column porch and the judgment seat. Same word, judgment seat, that's used... And Daniel chapter 7, verse 10 and verse 26, the judgment was set and the books were opened. So here we're in the Holy Holies looking out. This is his throne. Uh, glory to his name. The, the throne of David promised to the Messiah that he would reign forever and ever. So this is the era of time called the millennium, 1,000 years, where he reigns. Where does he reign? He reigns on the throne. Okay, so we're depicting this the best we can to show you and illustrate to you what it is that the prophecy says. Not only prophecy, we actually get the des design of what Ezekiel was shown. We also get that from the first temple in 1 um, Kings uh, chapter 7. It describes this. Okay, so this is the great white throne judgment where Christ will see it on his throne in the millennium. We're making that very, very clear. This would have to happen before New Jerusalem. Okay? That's a big part of what we're doing, it, of what we're teaching, is explaining to you that the Ezekiel Temple will be built. It will happen. It will be the judgment seat of Christ in his throne for 1,000 years, which we call the millennium. Alpha and Omega, the Lord Jesus Christ said, Behold, I will make all things new. He that was seated upon the throne, the throne of David. Okay, the throne in the temple. Guys, what we're doing is we're going to explain some very simple things. It's very simple to understand, but it's necessary. Even though it's simple and you say, Leland, okay, I get it. It's just that there's confusion about this and we're making it clear. Okay, we're making it clear there is a millennial temple. In the millennial temple, there's a throne. The throne is in the temple. Okay, um, that's a thousand years. That's Revelation ch chapter 20. Okay, Revelation chapter 20 precedes New Jerusalem. New Jerusalem is Revelation chapter 21 and 22. Okay, that's a different era of time than Revelation 20. He says he will... Uh, talks about the camp of the saints. He will tabernacle among them. So, for example, when we start talking about his throne, all right, and we, we go to make this uh, very clear to understand, we see at Revelation 21, verse 5, he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said, Right, these words are faithful and true. All right, so he's on the throne. Okay, this is Revelation 21. That's a tabernacle of God. Behold, tabernacle of God with men. He will dwell with them. He shall be as God and they shall be their people. All right. Then, verse 22, 
I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple. Okay, so the Lord God Almighty, the Lamb, um, fulfilling the temple in New Jerusalem. So there's no temple in New Jerusalem. All right, so what is the temple here? Revelation 7. Okay, verse 15, they are before the throne of God. The throne is where? And they serve him day and night in his temple. And he that sits upon the throne shall tabernacle among them. So this is a temple. This is saying there's a temple and there's a throne inside the temple. Thus, this is not New Jerusalem. This is the Ezekiel temple, the millennial temple it is talking about. Now, there are more than one throne happening here in Revelation 7. For example, uh, we get the throne of the Lamb, the chariot of the cherubim, okay? The four angels standing, holding four winds. We do get the th heavenly throne, okay? They stood before the throne, all right? In heaven, with the elders and the living creatures, okay? But then there's another throne here. That throne is, in verse 15, in the temple, okay? So... That is, uh, what we're trying to do is make this very clear, even though it's simple, making it very clear what the scriptures say. Christ will dwell in a physical throne, in a physical temple, in physical Jerusalem. Okay, not everything is spiritual. All right, it is uh, to be literal. It's literally going to happen. All right, now this is the promise to the Messiah. All right. Going back to Christ in, um, uh, with Mary, Behold, you shall conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. And he shall be great and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. The throne of David. Okay, that's what the throne is. It's the throne of David, this, uh, his seat. He will gloriously reign. And it's physically in the temple. Acts chapter 2. And uh, Apostle Peter is preaching on the day of Pentecost in verse uh, 29. Um, it's talking about David, David the patriarch, verse 30. Therefore David, being a prophet, knowing that God had sworn unto him that out of the fruit of his loins of David, according to his flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit upon his throne. Christ would sit upon the throne of David. The throne of David is in the temple. Okay, so Christ is on the throne throughout the book of Revelation. Okay, and we can see that to the, uh, to the church, he that overcomes will uh, sit on my throne even as I sat in my father's throne. So he's already sat in the father's throne by Revelation chapter 3. Okay, and that is, you know, the heavenly throne. Okay, John, he said, behold, uh, a door was open in heaven. All right, he heard a voice of a trumpet, and a door was open in heaven. Okay, this is the doors going into the, the throne room. All right, and I saw a throne. All right, Revelation chapter 4. Okay, now this is the promise. The Messiah would sit on throne, throne be in the temple. Once again, we're repeating this. Okay, but this is it's just making it very clear. Uh, 1 Chronicles chapter 17, verse 12, He shall build me a house. Now this is um, uh, the promise of the Father to the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, that He should build a house. I will be His Father, He shall be my Son. And I will not take my mercy away from Him as I took away from Him before. But I will set up him upon mine house and in my kingdom forever and ever. His throne will I establish forever. Now, this was not the physical temple, the first temple that Solomon built, was it? Because that was, that was destroyed. So this is the promise of the Father to the Son, to the Lord Jesus Christ, that he would reign in the, in the throne uh, forever. Um, and let's see. Yeah, because the house is established forever. Verse uh, 23. Okay, now let's also go to Jeremiah. Now you can see we have uh, a wood box in front of it as our uh, footstool. 
and we go uh, Jeremiah uh, chapter 3, we're going to talk about the Ark of the Covenant because that is the footstool. And uh, Jeremiah chapter 3 makes, makes it clear exactly what happens uh, with the Ark of the Covenant in the time of the millennium. So verse, uh, okay, verse 16, it shall come to pass that uh, uh, you multiply and increase in those days, they shall say no more the Ark of the Covenant of Yahweh. Neither shall it come to mind, neither shall you remember it, neither shall you visit it, uh, neither shall it be done anymore. At that time they shall call Jerusalem the throne of Yahweh. Okay, so Jerusalem throw Yahweh, and the nation shall be gathered unto it, into the name of the Lord. Okay, so that is the reason the Ark of the Covenant is not seen, it's not known, because his throne is in Jerusalem. Okay, they call Jerusalem the throne. All right, Jeremiah 17, all right, in verse 12. As a glorious high throne from the beginning is the, as the place of the sanctuary. So the throne is in the sanctuary. It's in the building. It's in the temple, okay, as well. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1. Uh, I saw the Lord high and lifted up. I saw his throne in the temple. So his throne is in the temple, all right, and... Uh, and that's what we're uh, showing you, that the throne that uh, we're depicting and we're sharing with you, it is, okay, in the Holy of Holies. And it is also this uh, remarkable fulfilling of uh, the prophetic word to the Lord Jesus Christ, that he will be seated upon the throne of David in Jerusalem, the city of the great king. Okay, guys, so as you can see, the throne in the temple, in the Holy of Holies, all the details of its order and arrangement and aspects um, coming from details in the first temple, also seeing what Ezekiel says, and the prophecies in Revelation. One of the most important aspects of the study and the whole series is his throne. Uh, we will actually provide you more information on the footstool and talk about the importance and significance of his footstool in another video but in this one what have we learned we have learned that lord jesus christ alpha and omega he said behold i make all things new he was seated on the throne seated seated in his father's throne in glory okay we could see that the they they were before the throne of god and served him day and night in the temple we know the throne is in the temple okay and this is the amazing promise to the lord jesus christ of his millennial reign when he will sit in the judgment seat. Okay. Um, marvelous, marvelous uh, time. So guys, thanks for watching. And uh, thank you for still following along in this series. We believe this is remarkable. We're very excited to share with you. Uh, very excited to share with you the order here physically where I'm staying to demonstrate and illustrate uh, the marvelous things. Uh, that are happening in the heavenly sanctuary and soon to happen in the earth. So, the voice came from the throne saying, Praise our God, uh, all you his servants that fear his name, both small and great. 